the doctor told you to take your medicine for the full 10 days, and you didn't. Now look what happened. This is a Reign of Books review. Okay, I'll admit it. If a book hasn't reached some sort of critical mass, or if it has underwhelming ratings, or if the author isn't tested, then I'm a little wary of giving a new piece of fiction my time. I mean, there's just too many books out there. I know I might be undermining the next great literary fiction, or the next big series that could change people's lives, and this author will go home penniless because I didn't give a new author a chance. (laughs) Who am I kidding? They'll be fine without me. Plus, I need people's recommendations. I need people to tell me what's good out there. I respect your informed opinions. So when I picked up a new post-apocalyptic thriller, I was shocked that I did that and shocked at how good it was. I held that Kindle in my hands, impressed by. It was because this post-apocalyptic thriller was different than anything I'd ever seen before. Anti-Bio piqued my curiosity because it's a future where nature's number one killer, the anti... no, the bacterial infection, which beats antibacterial drugs, is what finally brings us down. So I made a gamble, and it paid off, because Anti-Bio, the best way to describe it, is flat-out fun, even with all the heavy subject matter being the end of the world and All that stuff. Miserable suffering. The story centers on a group of super soldiers that go out into the sick lands to fight the strains. Super virulent bug bacteria that can turn your insides into liquid and pretty much wipe out the leftover remainder part of humanity inside the clean nation cities. If they get inside, no amount of sanitizer is going to save you. None. None of this. The super soldiers do fight infected humans out in the sick lands, and they come back to the clean nations and are quarantined. They can't risk infecting the rest of humanity, so they have no loved ones. They have nobody but each other and their canine dogs. These guys have a lot of back-slapping soldier humor, so be prepared, if you've never been in an army unit or been around army guys, to have a whole lot of dirty toilet jokes thrown at you. A whole lot. The dialogue is actually what is the best part about this book. It's hilarious and witty. I couldn't get enough of it. For example, the soldiers nicknamed the infected humans out in the wastelands the cooties. Ha ha, you got cooties. Each team member really shines during the battles with their canine sidekicks against overwhelming odds. The story takes a little while to ramp up, but when it gets there, it goes full tilt with mystery, intrigue, in an impressive battle for the future of mankind. I only have one small and one big complaint. Basically, it takes a little bit too long to actually start caring about these G.I. Joes. But that wasn't a big deal, because when it got there, it really got there. My big complaint is that there is a character that promised to be a super evil villain with Darth Vader-like control. And then this person just punked out. I mean, really, just no formidable force to deal with. You're gone. So it was uh, quite a waste. I thought it was a joke at first, but the joke was on me. Maybe the story didn't take itself as seriously as I thought it would. I mean, come on. The bad guys are called the cooties. The book shifted between almost a Star Wars epic where they're trying to destroy the Death Star, but then it went into like a B-movie Starship Troopers, which is a fun, campy, awesome movie that I absolutely love. But it kind of teeter-tottered and didn't really know what it wanted to be. But all in all, it was a fun romp, shoot 'em up with layers and layers of conspiracy that came out at the end that really set up the next book. But it's a self-contained book, so you can stop here. You can have fun with these guys and say, good guys winning. So yes, this is going to be another series. And for the first time, I actually have to wait on the next part to be published. Ah, that's new for me. Anybody who's teeter-tottering on, you know, should I or shouldn't I, because they already have too many series to read, Let me actually make a case. Not a case to continue, but a case to read this book by itself. Let's compare it to a great date. So the relationship analogy. This was an awesome date. You gotta treat something new. Not the boring old, you know, popcorn in a movie and dinner. You actually 
went out, did something interesting, but not super strange and bizarre for like a first date. And it was a great date. The person you're with, super witty, pitch perfect, funny, and you couldn't stop laughing. And you thought, wow, great experience I'll never forget. But you're not going to marry the person. Maybe, maybe not. So you could go either way. I'm going to continue it because I just think it's funny. And we'll see if Jake Bible can pull it off. Buy this book so he'll write a really good sequel. Look in the description for more details. Check us out somewhere on the internet. We hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. Give us some book recommendations. I need good books. Tell us to read them because we love good recommendations. I'm Josh. See you next time.